What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, back with another lesson video for you. This time we check out a really cool speed picking or alternate picking workout that has an interesting twist on combining technique and theory. I really hope that you can adapt this system of combining those two topics for your own practice routine or when you're creating your own exercises, because it will help you save a lot of time when you develop both of these skills simultaneously. Now here's the exercise I want you to work on this week. So as you can see we keep the exact same pattern and phrasing throughout the entire exercise, but there are minor changes concerning the notes we are playing with each repetition. By adding this extra level of challenge to the exercise, you also focus on memorizing the characteristic notes of these minor scales. Only one note changes each time when we compare the scales to the first scale of the exercise, Aeolian or Natural Minor. You should be familiar with this scale already and there is nothing quite special to this sound. There is also nothing wrong with it, but it's of great importance to also have some more exotic scales and approaches ready for whenever you need them. So let's discuss the other scales real quick before we move to the technical and mechanical aspect of the exercise. For the second pattern we lower the second scale degree of the natural minor scale and that one sounds like this. That is of course the sound of Phrygian. Very cool, interesting and dark sounding mode. This one is very often used in rock and metal songs because of that exact characteristic note, the lower second scale degree. Here is natural minor with the major second above the root. And here's Phrygian. So this is just a very basic example of E natural minor and E Phrygian. And as you can hear Phrygian has a much darker sound due to the half step above the root. That is extremely characteristic for rock and metal riffs. That half step sounds way more evil than. So, this is a way to easily remember the difference between Aeolian and Phrygian if you're a rock and metal style player. The important thing to memorize right here is that it would sound pretty terrible if I would use the natural minor or Aeolian scale to improvise over a Phrygian riff. For example, in E Phrygian again, when the riff is moving up to the lower second scale degree, the characteristic note, and I will play the major second of natural minor, F sharp. That sounds pretty terrible, a lot of unwanted tension right here and you should definitely avoid that. So keep an eye out for Phrygian riffs and try to memorize this trick of visualizing them quickly by spotting the lower second scale degree above the root. So again this is something you really have to keep in mind when you're writing or improvising in this style of music and quite a lot of players lack this kind of theory knowledge and are frustrated why it sometimes sounds good when they use a certain scale and why it doesn't work other times. Up next we change the minor 6 of natural minor to a major 6. Let's hear what that sounds like. So that is of course the sound. of Dorian, another minor mode. Again the only difference is the major 6th as we discussed, all the other notes are the same as in the natural minor or Aeolian scale. But this makes a huge difference again, because you would describe the major 6th as a happy sounding interval, 
similar in tonal quality and color to the major third for example. While the minor sixth featured in the natural minor scale has a sad kind of color and sound to it, can be compared to the minor third in color and sound. So to summarize, we essentially have a minor scale here with a major sixth interval, resulting in a pretty unique sound that you should work into your playing much more. I really don't hear the Dorian sound enough out there, especially in rock and metal compositions and we should change that. The sound of the next example should already ring a bell for you if you watched some of the previous lessons I posted on here. If not, feel free to go back to them. Let's see how it sounds when we raise the seventh scale degree of the natural minor scale. So as we said, we change only one note again, we raise the 7th scale degree of Aeolian or natural minor and get harmonic minor. This is one of the most interesting and actually more exotic minor sounds and we discussed it a lot on here already because of its importance. Changing the minor 7th to a major 7th results in more tension and that kind of oriental sound. Let's hear another quick comparison of natural minor and harmonic minor again. Let's take E as the root note again. This would be the minor 7th of natural minor when I play it as an octave interval. That's this kind of sound. And then we raise that 7th scale degree and get that cool, dark, exotic and almost oriental sound. Which is really cool. If you don't know how to correctly use this sound for your own compositions, you are really missing out in my opinion. If that's the case, please refer to the harmonic minor lesson I posted a couple of weeks ago. This one is a great starting point in my opinion. Up next for the second part of the video we should also discuss the mechanical approach of course. We are alternate picking here, meaning continuous down and up strokes for the entire exercise. So there are no hammer-ons in there, no pull-offs, no slides uh, or anything like that. We pick every single note. So that obviously means the biggest challenge right here is switching between the strings correctly. We don't want the listener to hear those string transitions at all. So you absolutely want to avoid getting stuck between a string pair for example. I'm quite sure that this is a frustration that you're already familiar with when you tried speeding up a lick for example that you learned. So tremolo picking. Picking really fast on one string or just one note is a skill that is relatively easy to achieve when you put in the hours and work, but mastering those string transitions is a completely different story in my opinion. We work on that a lot in my online course 10 Steps to Modern Shredding, but that is a 10 week course. For now I just have to break it down to a short summary. One of the most important things here is that I arrange this lick in a way that makes these transitions a little bit easier by repeating certain positions within the scale. This is a trick I often use when I compose fast licks, but I also don't want to limit myself to this system completely of course. For more challenging licks I would probably work with an economy picking approach for example. Now here's the thing that I want you to remember for now. When we end a phrase with a downstroke on the lower string, like uh, in the beginning of the workout, and then have to play an upstroke on the next string, it feels quite natural because our pick is traveling down with the downstroke and it is in a good position for the upstroke after that. Of course you also need the right picking angle for that to work effortlessly. The tip of your pick should be pointing away from the guitar and not inside the body. So to over exaggerate the motion we want the pick to move away from the instrument as opposed to this kind of angle where you end up getting stuck between the E and A string right here and your pick will have to travel over the A string again to be in the right position for the upstroke. So with this angle we're moving away from the guitar but when you end a phrase with an upstroke on the lower string and then have to perform a downstroke on the higher string 
you need a different picking angle of course and that's where it gets really complicated at some point you will have to combine those two angles to perform very complex licks but that's a topic for another video for now i just want you to memorize that i arranged the patterns in the scale so that i can work with just one of those two angles and that would be where the tip of the pick is moving away from the guitar as we said so in order to do that i have to repeat certain scale positions by repeating the phrase on the a string here i end up with a downstroke before i have to switch to the d string by repeating the phrase again i end up with a downstroke for the last note and so on But for one day that is enough information on that I think. When you practice this phrase make sure to start very slow. You can also isolate each of those four groups and work on them individually before you connect them for the full exercise. I also want you to focus on staying relaxed with your picking hand when you're playing this phrase for a number of reasons. The obvious reason number one is that you also want it to sound nice when you're playing with a clean sound or even on an acoustic guitar. And if your alternate or speed picking technique has a picking attack like that it will sound really messy and quite terrible. So focus on maintaining a nice effortless technique. You should have some picking attack, of course. But generally, my main focus is always trying to stay relaxed when I'm picking. That also makes it way easier to speed it up. And another very important reason is that you don't want to hurt yourself. So when you feel any kind of pain or an extreme burn in any parts of your arm, it's time to stop, relax and start again in a couple of days. In the end, please make sure to subscribe to stay updated for more free guitar lessons. There's a lot more coming in the next couple of weeks. Leave a like if you learned something new or if you just enjoyed the video and a comment in case you have any questions I could answer for you. I really hope that you have a lot of fun practicing this exercise and I will see you in the next video. All the best until then.